When this man bought an old, broken-down BMW at a car junkyard, he had no idea that his life would change forever. He made the purchase with the idea of repairing and rebuilding it, maybe even selling it onward. But after what he found inside the car, he couldn't help but burst into tears. Before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Finding a vehicle turned out to be way easier than he had anticipated. He wrote a post about it on his social media account, a request that would hopefully reach someone who had a banged up car available for a friendly price. But the call out ended up getting a response that he did not expect. A complete stranger contacted him within minutes and asked him to come over to his car park to check out his wares. The offer of multiple available cars interested Brian deeply. When he arrived at the gate, the owner was already there to greet him. It was an older man, about 75 years of age, Brian estimated. The man said that he used to be a car dealer and that these vehicles were all that was left of his business. The two men walked around the car park for the better part of an hour. It seemed more like a junkyard than anything to Brian. Now that Brian saw the cars in person, he wondered if the price still wasn't too steep. Cars with no windows or wheels and burned out engines. This was a pile of garbage in his eyes. Did he make a mistake coming to this dump? It was beginning to feel more and more like he did, but the old man calmed him down, assuring him that he had just the thing to cheer him up. He had already selected the perfect car for Brian to go home with. They walked across the lot, seeing some cars that seemed to meet Brian's criteria from a distance. Eventually, they ended up next to a gray-colored BMW. It was old, but on the outside, it still looked quite pristine. This is your car, and I won't take no for an answer, the old man said. Brian agreed that the car looked good from the outside, but before he could decide on the right car, he first wanted to look at some other examples. He stepped aside, trying to peek into a red Toyota, but the old man stopped him pulling his arm and guiding him back towards the BMW. What is wrong with this vehicle? Why are you trying to push it on me this hard? Brian asked in confusion. But the old man swore that the car was fine. Brian was still hesitant. It seemed almost too good to be true, but the old man kept persisting, pushing him to buy this car. There had to be something wrong with the car, but for that money, he could hardly pass up on the deal. So eventually, Brian accepted and paid the retired dealer. Loading the car on his tow truck, Brian drives home. He still wondered what the old man was up to, but he was happy with his good deal. He really wanted to take a closer look under the hood this time. It was like the dealer said. The car was mostly fine. How could it be that he got this car for basically free? It was amazing. He had just been sold a $20,000 car for just around 100 bucks. This felt like a cruel joke, but the car was really there in front of him. He lowered the BMW and wanted to call the dealer. He just had to thank him for this deal. He grabbed his phone from his pocket and rang the number from the dealer, the same number that he also called just that very morning. But to his surprise, the number was out of order. It was not connected to anyone anymore. Hmm, that is strange, Brian spoke out loud. For a moment, the strange feeling he got back at the junkyard returned. Stop overthinking this. Just be happy with your purchase, he said to himself. It was now time to inspect the inside thoroughly. The car smelled musky and there was junk everywhere, but inside waited a huge secret. The tissues and empty food containers on the seats were easily wiped off. He pulled the handle and the compartment on the passenger seat side swung open. The space was filled to the brim with stuff. Brian reached out his hands, trying to lift out the plastic bags so that he could peek inside. Seemed easy enough, he thought, but the bags turned out to be a lot heavier than he thought. What the hell is in these things, he spoke out loud. With a sense of wonder, he loosened the knot of the first bag slowly. He reached inside and then his hands touched something hard and cold and it gave him a shivering feeling. He quickly pulled his hand out and peered into the bag. What is it? But once he got a good look, he couldn't believe his eyes. Tears started to well up and Brian started to cry intensely. Brian felt his whole body shaking. It was the strangest sensation he ever felt in his entire life. Would the other bags have the same content? The weight of the bags made it seem so. Brian vigorously opened the other three bags that were present in the passenger seat. And once that part was done, he decided to look in all four bags at the same time. He couldn't believe his eyes. All four bags had the same remarkable contents. Brian was in complete shock. 
He lifted the contents out of the bag and placed them on the passenger seat beside him. Light came through the window of his garage, and it hit the object just right. A sharp reflection came from it, covering the car's insides with a golden hue. On the passenger seat lay a huge golden brick of at least eight pounds, and stacks of money lay beside it. It was the most amazing sight, a sight that normal mortal men would never see in their entire life. What was he being dragged into? Was he being forced into something criminal? Brian got out of the vehicle and walked around in his garage nervously for a couple of minutes. There was only one logical thing to do right now. He had to call the police and tell them about his discovery. And when he did, he really hoped that they would believe his unlikely story. Within minutes, they arrived at his house. They hardly spoke and immediately started inspecting the dashboard's content. Where did you get this car? The officer stared at Brian intently and scanned him up and down for a long time. Brian explained that he bought it from a junkyard not far away and that he was unaware of the car's contents. He just thought that he got a good deal. Take us there, the police demanded. They drove over to the large field of cars as quickly as possible. But once they arrived at the fence lot, Brian's eyes turned large. He couldn't believe it. The once lively field was completely empty. All cars that earlier filled the field seemed to have vanished into thin air. This cannot be. This is impossible, Brian screamed. One officer looked over his shoulder to the confused Brian in the back seat. Brian told the officer that there were at least 50 cars in this field just this morning. He swore to it, hoping that the policeman would believe him. Only a small shed in the center of it remained. Let's take a look inside, the officer said. The door of the shed was unlocked. Inside the shed stood only a bare table with no chairs, and in the center of the tabletop lay a letter. It was addressed to Brian. Brian's hand started shaking when he saw his name on the piece of paper. His trembling hand picked up the letter and he started reading. Apparently the car dealer was unwillingly involved in a massive bank heist over ten years ago. How can you be involved unwillingly? The officer asked. Brian's reading continued. The letter stated that the dealer did not rob the bank himself, but that the criminals knew about his car dealership. They threatened the lives of his family and by doing so, forced him to provide the criminals with the getaway cars for the heist. The man was innocent but was now a forced accomplice. And the torment didn't stop there. Because after the heist, they returned to his dealership with the cars. The criminals then made his dealership into a secret storage for all their stolen goods from that point on. If the old man ratted them out, they would get to his family. This is terrible, said one of the officers, who was intently listening to Brian's every word. The car mechanic continued, but after years of torment, I finally had enough. This was no way for me and my family to live. We had to get out. So that's when I formulated a plan. The old man had been used by the gang for over 10 years by that point. He was under constant surveillance, so going to the police himself was out of the question. He had to get evidence of their criminal operation into the world some other way. And that's when he got an amazing idea. Multiple cars in his now-retired field were still filled with stolen treasure from one of the last heists. He only had to get one of them out of the lot without the criminals knowing about it. He couldn't do it himself, so when Brian posted the ad online, he knew he had to respond. He got Brian to take the car off the field with the stolen evidence still inside. He himself never left with the car, so the criminals didn't suspect anything. And once the evidence was out there and safe, the old man got his family and left the country for Mexico. But not without leaving one more piece of evidence that tied it all together. The criminals immediately noticed when the old man and his family took off on the plane. They rushed over to the junkyard and got rid of all the cars to destroy evidence. But they were already too late because the most important piece of evidence was already in the hand of Brian and now also in the hands of the police. The final sentence on the paper read as follows. Check behind the steering wheel. Brian was confused by this demand, but he did as he was requested to do. He and the police officers drove back to his garage, and after a minute of fumbling around with his fingers, Brian pulled out a small sheet of paper from behind the steering wheel. On there were the coordinates to the main hideout of the criminal gang, and that was all the police needed. The police sprung into action, mobilizing an entire brigade, and after that, everything went fast. They arrested the leader of the group and the rest followed shortly after. Brian saw it on the news and was glad that all turned out well. The old man's family was safe and he was happy he could help.